Hello, I am Marcel Khadiv and this is a demo of a new hair tool for XSI called simply Hair Basic. Hair Basic allows you to utilize existing polygon tools inside XSI for creating and modeling hair. It contains tools for generating hair strands from geometry parametrically, following the geometry contours as the forms and then translating these hairs back to polygons for rendering. All of this can be set up through a set of operators, but to make things very easy, Hair Basic contains a function called Add Hair to Selection, which does all of that work for us. In this demo, I will be only using that function. You can download and install Hair Basic for your version of XSI from our website, ifear.com. Once you have done that, you're ready to go. Let's begin by opening up a new XSI scene and creating a sphere. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will just use a polygon primitive for a surface. However, you can apply the same principles to any arbitrary polygon mesh. If you open up the script editor and execute our magic function, add hair to selection, you will be notified that either no objects are currently selected or no faces are selected. Add hair to selection works only on currently selected mesh faces, and so we must select some faces on the surface of our sphere and then execute the add hair to selection function again. This time something happened. Our faces got extruded from the surface of the sphere. If you look closer, you will notice that under the extruded faces we now have some hair. Also, the original sphere is still there, so the extruded faces come from a copy of our original mesh. I will make the extruded mesh wireframe so that we can better see what goes on inside of it. This mesh is now our hair model. It will be responsible for where the hair gets generated and what shape the hair has. I can change the extrusion depth and the hair will get shorter or longer with it. Now we are free to edit our extruded mesh to refine our hair and produce more of it. Let's extrude some more faces. The hair does not initially conform to the changes we made. That is because we need to use our magic add hair to selection function to specify the new faces that should reflect our hair tips. To save me some time from going to the script editor over and over again, I will drag and drop the function onto exercise script toolbar, thus generating a button which executes it. When I press the button, the function gets executed again and our hair is updated accordingly. I can go and grab some of the extruded vertices and alter the shape of our hair tips in a freestyle manner. I can also select more faces and extrude them to produce more hair in more places. The extruding process doesn't have to be uniform. As long as we call add hair to selection on proper faces, we will get predictable results. In fact, we do not even have to extrude at all. We can achieve same result by just pulling off some faces and calling our function.
HairBasic is smart enough to identify the changes you make to the mesh and fill them with hair. After having modeled the hair, let's go and look at its structure. Notice that the scene now has three extra objects. One of these is the node representing hair guides. If we select it, we can look at its parameters. After a bunch of technical parameters, at the very bottom you can find the segments per guide parameter. This controls how smooth the resulting guides and hairs get generated by setting the number of points along their length. The hair model mesh is the one we just modeled, and we can hide it for now. The last new node is our hair node. Here we can see a number of operators in the stack, starting from an operator that generates roots. Inside of it, we can alter the number of hairs that get generated per each polygon, thus changing the hair density. Next is the hair from guides generator. We can change some interpolation parameters in here. The last operator generates polygons from hair. Here we can control the thickness of generated strands at root and tip of the hairs, as well as change the number of sides for each strand cylinder. All of this hair is generated in a way that depends on the original sphere surface. So if we take our sphere and add a bend operator to it, we can see the hairs deform along its surface. Likewise, we can modify the extruded sphere mesh and control the hair shape. This opens up a lot of possibilities for hair animation and dynamics. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and look forward to any comments. Thank you.